compared to the blue area of the moon. An area that, for some reason, you can breathe without a spacesuit. Nearly kills everyone around her just by yelling stop, while Tony Stark builds a magical transformer to attack the Phoenix. There you go, Marvel's out of ideas. There's only one scene with the gun, no one actually gets shot. Rebooted into a more uh, grimy character with the new 52. Welcome to another Comic Pal video review. This time around, I'm going to be looking at Fables number one. Now this um, issue came out quite a while ago, um, but I picked it up recently during a Comixology um, DC number one sale, um, the same sale where I got um, Sandman number one, and um, basically picked it up because I've been hearing a lot of really good stuff about Fables, a lot of um, positive talk, um, the spinoffs like Ferris have been gotten a lot of good um, buzz. And um, there seems to be just this whole general uh, fairy tale revival going on right now, um, both in comic books and outside of comic books. Um, this came out before the ABC TV show, uh, Once Upon a Time or whatever it's called, but they kind of have the same premise. Um, the, the fairy tale characters have been banished to the uh, real world. Um, I don't really know what's going on with the ABC show because I don't watch it, but um, in fables, they've kind of got to keep under the radar and they have these, um, some kind of magic technology that keeps them masked, you know, so that they appear as normal humans. Uh, for example, the big bad wolf is just a regular looking dude who's an investigator. Um, there's a great scene, uh, with beauty and the beast where they go to snow white for marriage counseling. That is a really great way that they explain a lot of the rules of the universe without, um, resorting to clunky exp exposition. And um, part of the problem they're having is that the stress of being married is kind of uh, eroding some of the magic that's keeping Beast looking like a human rather than a beast. Um, and this is in, you know, pretty good contrast to Damsels, which is more like Shrek, where they're kind of banishing the magical fairy tale creatures, but they're still within the fairy tale world. Um, <clears throat> so definitely, and uh, I haven't read too much... Um, of uh, the the Xenoscope Grim stuff, I've just read a, a couple of the, the um, Alice in Wonderland um, graphic novels, and this doesn't seem to really coincide with that either. So there's a lot of space for a lot of different type of fairy tale storytelling. So you can kind of pick the one that meets your needs. Um, I do like that the writers do a bit of lampshade hanging with um, the Big Bad Wolf when he mentions um, Snow White's sister's name to her, and Snow White's like, "Yes, I know my sister's name." And he's kind of, you know, it's kind of the author telling us, yeah, I know it's kind of hokey, but that's the way people have to talk at comic books because that's how we know what's going on, you know, because we have to find out somehow. So either we need a, a substitute character that, that fills in for us to asking the stupid questions or we need characters to talk in a weird way. So I just like that he, you know, throws a little lampshade on it. I didn't expect this series to start off a murder, as a murder mystery. Of course, I didn't really know what to expect at all anyways. But um, we've got we've got Snow White's uh, sister uh, Rose Red, um, you know, murdered or apparently murdered, and um, I don't know. It's, it's it's pretty interesting. I know nothing else about the about this this series, but it does intrigue me. Um, I'm I'm curious whether or not it stays a murder mystery type of series or you know noir series or if it goes in a different direction. But I'm intrigued. It's a pretty interesting way to start off the series. Um, and, uh, you know, just two little things that I liked. I really like uh, the way Prince Charming's dialogue is. His sex scene is hilarious. And um, I like that uh, Snow White gets um, pissed if you mention the Seven Dwarves. I'd like to see if that pans out, if that's just a throwaway gag. Um, overall, I give this issue four out of five stars. Um, and I'm curious to, to continue the story and see if I can get caught up to the present day and, and see what I think about it. So thanks for, for watching. Leave a comment here on YouTube, on Comic Find or Comic Pal, wherever you happen to have seen this review. Thanks.